Hi, everyone. I'm Coach Jen from Code Speak Labs, and this is Maxwell. And today we're going to be coding in Scratch, and we're going to be answering one of our most frequently asked questions from students, which is how do you set a winning score and a high score in your game? So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to show you an example um, first of this game where I'm Gobo, I'm trying to catch stars. So, Maxwell, can you tell what's my current score? Uh oh, I lose. What score did I get? You got 12. I got 12. The high score is 62. So, that means of all the people who've played this game, um, 62 is the highest score. And so, I got those points by catching these stars. So what we're going to teach you, you can do use in any sort of game that you want. Anytime you want to um, add up a score, have a scoreboard. Um, but um, the, the game itself can be designed with whatever rules you want. OK, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, let's do basically the easiest game you could play, which is just click the cap. And then we'll show you based on that how to add high score and winning score, and then you can make the game itself more complicated. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Maxwell, um, where do I go to get started? You go to events, which is yellow. Yes, okay, so and we get- got the when flag clicked. When my green flag is clicked, I'm gonna go ahead and now set my variable. Maxwell, um, do you remember what a variable is? A variable is something that holds a number or a thing. Yes, exactly. So in computer science, also, um, when we grab out the one five click in the event, then make um um it's not gonna say um the word green flag. It's gonna have a picture of a green flag. Yes. Okay. So you're gonna create your variable here. So when I was a kid. We learned about variables in math class, and it was something like x equals 1 or x plus 1 equals 2, what is x, those kinds of things. And it's kind of a fun puzzle, but it didn't really have that much meaning to me. And then once I started learning computer science, then I realized, whoa, variables can do tons of cool stuff. So we are going to first by start by making a variable called score. So you can actually give your variable any name you want, much more exciting than just X or Y, but we wanna choose something logical so that you remember, what does this variable mean? So now I'm gonna know, okay, this variable means score. Okay, so I'm gonna click okay. And at the beginning of the game, Maxwell, what do you think I should set my score to? Um, I think you should set your score to zero because Otherwise, or, or just add. Yeah, so this is whatever your, your score starts with. So you can tell here, when I created my score variable, already it's appearing in the top left, just automatically. Um, and it's now at zero, because I'm setting, I'm gonna set my score here to zero. So. There's a drop down menu that says my variable, but you want to actually change score because we're actually going to end up having more than one variable. Okay, so now that score is set to zero, let's go ahead and figure out how do we make the score go up. So um, variables again in computer science are super fun because it actually can do things that you want. Um, why are scores fun? Like why even bother to have a score you think Maxwell? Because it makes the game more fun. Okay. Yeah, it makes the game more fun. You feel motivated. You want to get points. Um, it's why a lot of teachers use, you know, getting stickers when you're good. It's sort of like its own little scoreboard. Um, I, so I wonder if you can even code. Uh, 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 I wonder if you could even code a really cool game using the area. Yes. Um, so when this sprite is clicked, we're going to go ahead and change score by one. So this is how you add a point. So let's check if this code is working. So when I click the green flag up here, and then I click the sprite over here, it goes up every time I click. Doo -doo. 
So, like I said, this is probably one of the easiest games you could play. You want to click? Woo, score. Obviously, you can imagine lots of ways to make this game more interesting and more exciting. Like maybe the cat was moving around, maybe it would disappear. Maybe you have different kinds of cats, and some cats you want to click, and some are actually going to explode when you click them. There's lots of different variations of this that you can make. But since today we're focusing on different score variables, we'll just leave the game play um, pretty easy. Okay, so when the sprite is clicked, we're changing the score by one. So now we want to know, okay, so what should we do? Or as the game designer, I can decide at some point you win. Um, and it's really up to me to decide when that happens. Um, so first I'm going to um, get a loop. And where do I find loops, Maxwell? The loops are control, right? Yeah. Let's control. find out. So we have control and we have repeat loops. So there's different kinds of loops. Um, we're going to use the forever, forever loop this time because we want the computer to forever be checking whether or not the person has a high score. So let's do something pretty manageable. Let's say high score, or rather not high score, winning score is five. So we're going to now need a conditional that's checking if the player gets the score of five, then what should the cat say? What do you think, Maxwell? Uh, I need a, you win. You win. You win, 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 win. Okay, so we're going to nest some blocks together. Um, first, we have this, again, forever loop. Then we put this if then inside here. You need the if then that just has one mouth. So it has like one alligator mouth. Then it has this shape, has six sides, so it's a little hexagon shape. And we actually are gonna go to the green operators area over here. Um, and we're gonna find a hexagon. There's more than one hexagon. We're looking for this equal sign. And again, Max, what did I say the winning score was again? Five. Five, okay. So it's 50 by default, I'm gonna change it to five. It would take me a long time to click that cat 50 times to test that this works. Um, so if blank equals five, then, so what condition do I want to test, Maxwell? What do I want to check what's five? You want to check if the score is five. Yeah, so let's go ahead and see, okay. So you can see here under my variable section, um, I have this option to pick up this little oval with the word score in it. So now it's testing the condition. If score equals five, then, then what? Can you remind me, what do you want the cat to say? You win. You win. Okay, so let's go ahead and look and look and say, <laughs> you could even program a dance if you want. I'll say, you win. Okay, let's see if this works. So I press the green flag. I can't tell if anything different's happening because I, don't yet have the winning score. So how do we get the winning score, Maxwell? What do I have to do to this cat? Yeah, I keep clicking on it. And so three, four, moment of truth! You win! Yay! And as you can tell, it'll stay just for two seconds because that's what I coded it to do. Um, okay, so now this is the winning score. So it's up to you. You can make a really hard game by saying you need a score of like 100. Um, or you can make an easy game and say, you know what, as long as you click it once, you win. So it's really up to you. Okay, so that is the winning score. But you can tell, because we set score to zero whenever we start, oh, I don't remember now what, what, what my highest score was. I know I won the game because I went to at least five, but the game allows me to keep playing. So um, let's say we want to add a high score. Now, so why do you think it's fun to have a high score? Like, why do a lot of arcade games and things like that retain the high scored information. Because then um, you, you, you know your biggest score and then you can try to beat it. Yeah, so like a lot of people like wanna get their personal best. So it helps remember like, what's the high score that I've ever gotten on this game? Actually, actually go back and do better. Like when we play Super Mario Bros, sometimes we beat the game, we beat the level, but maybe we haven't yet gotten like the three big coins that you can get. So you might go back and see, can we do even better? Um, okay, so to do that, let's go ahead. We're gonna use this when green flag clicked again. 
And we're gonna use another forever loop because again, we want the computer just continuously checking for this condition. Forever, it's going to be forever. Are, are you a, a human loop? Is that the human loop move? Human loop dance? Uh, yeah. Okay, so now we wanna compare our score to our high score and we actually wanna display a high score. So we need another variable. Um, because just like Maxwell told us, variables can store awesome things. It can store words. It can store numbers. And so we want to store another number. This time we're going to make a variable called high score because it's a high score. So variables in computer science are such that you, especially when you move on to text-based code, you don't want to have any spaces in your name. So let's get into that habit. Let's call high score and we're just going to Squish it together. We're going to go and capitalize that S so it's really obvious that it's a different word. And we're going to save it here. And you'll notice, boom, it will automatically appear here. So we're going to start now using that high score variable. Okay, so we need another conditional. We want to check if our score that yeah. we've clicked so far is bigger than the highest score that's ever been achieved. So right now, high score is zero because we haven't actually um, played the game since we've had high score. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna do, we're gonna need again this operator, this green hexagon. But instead we're gonna do this greater than, okay. And we're gonna take the variable and we're gonna say, okay, let's check if score is not greater than 50, but rather checking against another variable. Is it greater than high score? And if so, we are going to use our set block again. Set we're gonna set our high score to, to what? Score. To score exactly. So let's see what that would actually mean. So again, if I press the green flag to run my code, I'm clicking it, you'll notice I won. And let's say I got the score of six. So now my high score is set at six. Oh, but when I press the green flag, let's, let's check out again what happened exactly. Score went back down to zero because I'm always setting score. So for my current game, it always starts at zero. But now the computer remembers the highest score ever is what, Maxwell? Six. Six. The highest score ever is six. Okay. So let's see if I can go ahead and beat that and see what happens. So Maxwell, can you can you beat my score? Okay. I'll beat it. Okay, so you won because you you passed the winning score. And now, keep clicking. Whoa! So what happened to high score? It moved up two, so now it's eight. Yeah, because what happened is the computer checked if score, so your score was what? Greater than your high score. Yeah, so my high score used to be what? Six. Six. And so it was greater than six. So then the computer said, okay, I'm now going to set the high score to your new score, which is eight. So now whenever anyone plays this game, they know, oh, eight I'm, is now the I, highest score. Ten? <laughs> okay, after we finish the video, you can go and try to get 10. So that is how we do, again, I'm just gonna zoom out. That's how we made our score variable. We added a point for every time you clicked it. We set the score to zero. So that it always starts at zero when you first play. We set the winning score to five. It says you win. And we set a high score to remember what the highest score has been. Awesome, Maxwell, great job. Thank you for helping me today. High five, huh? stand up, high five. Bam, high score. Thanks everyone. If you wanna see more tips and tricks in Scratch, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.